<laughs> so thanks for bearing with me in this last presentation. Um, and mine is called Learning to Improve, Creating a Culture of Evidence-Based Improvement in Chilean Schools. Um, so I would like to start first by giving us a little bit of background um, about what what is what does education look like in Chile right now? And because I will specifically be studying um, and working with schools or like government schools or public schools um, more than private schools here. And so just a few statistics for you. Um, of the students who apply to university, only about 30% from public schools are admitted to university as compared to 79% um, from private institutions. 45% of students from the survey say that they do not believe that their academic abilities can be improved. This is basically saying that students have like a, a very fixed mindset rather than a, a growth mindset about their academic abilities. And sadly, only 30% of teachers and school leadership um, administrators in vulnerable institutions believe that their students can access higher education, as opposed to 93% um, from institutions that serve wealthier families. So you can see there's a major difference here um, between these more public institutions um, and their private counterparts. And this is important as we think about um, the way that education, the education system is set up here. Um, so to give you a little bit of background about um, how the education system is, it functions in Chile is that there's a universal school choice system um, which is something really unique to Chile. Most countries do not have a universal school choice system in which families are essentially given here um, a voucher from the government, which is an amount of money that they can put toward tuition to send their child to school. So this means that they could technically choose to send their kid to a private institution, a subvencionado, which is kind of like a mix between the two, um, or, or a public institution. Um, and the whole idea behind school choice, as we may have heard, you may have heard from being in the U.S., school choice is like a huge topic, right? Um, and the idea behind that is that you're letting families choose where to send their kids to school, and also that, that this induces this um, like competition between schools. And the idea behind that is then schools are inspired to improve and get better so that they attract students. And here in Chile, if you attract like for every student you attract, you get funding as well um, from the government for your school. Um, and there is even a law that was instated, I think, relatively recently, um, that if you if you accept more students from a lower socioeconomic level, you're actually given more money. Um, so the idea is that it's kind of like you know, capitalism, um, with that that oh okay if there's competition then. Um, that causes everyone to get a little better, to like really market themselves well, to make their product amazing. Um, but in theory, I mean, schools are not the same as a company. They're not the same. They, they don't necessarily know how to make those improvements, or they don't have the resources, or they don't have the time. Um, and that's a huge, huge issue here in Chile, as within the US. Um, and so this is, this is the part I'm gonna be focusing on, is how do we actually you know, maybe that change, that, that feeling of let's improve, there's a motivation there, there's the want to do that. Obviously, schools and parents and teachers want their kids to get a good education, but how to do that is really the question here. And so to give a little bit more background, um, in graduate school, um, I studied global affairs, which is incredibly general, um, but really, um, focused on education and research design, and was working for a year with Enseña Chile, which is an organization here, which is um, basically the Chilean version of Teach for America. Um, and came, it was a year long project, but I was here for two months um, helping them work on that part of the question of, well, how do you actually get schools to improve? Um, so, came here and working with Enseña Chile, which has this kind of consultancy branch in which they actually work with schools on how to better use data and feedback to improve themselves. Um, I was sent out with a teammate of mine to various schools around a few different parts of Chile. Um, we visited 16 schools, did a lot of classroom observations, some focus groups with teachers, um, and a bunch of interviews with, again, teachers as well as school directors and people directivos, so other administrators, about asking them about, you know, is do you have a current system of feedback? Is there, what is the relationship like between the teachers and the equivo directivo? Um, what kind of 
resources do you need? Like all these kinds of questions about how would you actually create a culture or how would you actually create a school that learns um, is the kind of the terminology we've been calling it. Um, and so that was a really, that was basically what happened last time. Um, and we came up with, again, to sort of answer some of how we would actually execute school improvement, we found out that the most important the port, more, most important things that came out of that research was having a good feedback system. So a lot of communication between the equipo directivo, the teachers, and even the students, along with effective methods of classroom observation, um, making sure that you have people actually there watching the teachers, watching how the students are responding, and like giving that feedback back and having a really constructive conversation after. Those were two very important components, but also, just having a school culture that is conducive to letting those things happen was very important. Um, and depending on the school that we were at, it seemed like these things were functioning really well or not functioning very well. But so when I returned in 20, it's like July 2018, um, after this project, we thought, okay, great. You know, we can kind of create a system of feedback. We can kind of create good classroom observations based on some of the literature and the, the various systems we found. But like, what the heck is school culture? Um, what does that consist of? What does it look like? How do you create it if it doesn't exist? So that's why when I came back, I was like, huh, I should try for Fulbright. <laughs> um, and actually explore this question a little bit more because knowing that in San Chile, again, my organization that I'm working with would be continuing um, on this project that perhaps we could dig into it a little bit more together. And so out of that, my research question and goals. Um, first, the question is, how might schools create a culture that fosters evidence-based continuous improvement to enhance teaching and student learning? And so I have two main goals um, coming out of this project. The first is a, um, more on the implementation side, which is to produce concrete, effective in interventions that will be implemented in Chilean schools through Enseño Chile. So um, currently, this Colegios que aprenden, the consultancy kind of branch I was telling you about, they're already working with um, about 10 schools right now um, on an ongoing basis, helping the equipo directivos um, like figure out how to kind of create those systems of feedback, how to start working cl more closely with their teachers to like understand how to improve um, their, their student learning. Um, and so hopefully I'll be able to develop some prototypes that we can then actually try in these schools. Um, and eventually be part of that product. And then the second part is to uncover some more generalizable principles um, and understanding of best practices that can guide um, the change in school culture and then like create a continuous school culture that's conducive to schools being their own drivers of improvement. Um, so what's great is that hopefully this is helping schools really be their own um, like sustainable drivers of improvement. And so I'll be working um, with two wonderful advisors at La Católica, um, Susana Claro and Veronica Cabezas, um, who both are founders of Enseño Chile. We'll buy you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they're, they're wonderful. Um, and planning to work with them um, on my research design, um, helping them give me some like more literature to dig into on what, what has already been do done. Um, and especially like Chilean specific literature um, and then the idea is they'll you know also guide me on as I create my um, surveys and everything and that brings me to more of the methodology um, so basically month one um, I'll be doing like I said some more of like digging to literature talking a lot with my advisors um, about what I should be reading and also finalizing exactly which schools I want to use as case studies. Um, the idea here is that I want to basically select five or so schools, and I have a couple in mind, um, that are really bright spots in this, that already have like a culture that seems really conducive to like, we communicate, we have feedback, we use data, we try to get better every day. And then also maybe a couple that aren't doing so well to see you know, what are the main struggles, um, what are some of the main concerns with you know, doing something this. Um, oh, and this is Colegio Para Quemada, which I visited last time, and that was one of the schools that we were very impressed by. So they're probably going to be like one of the case studies they use. Um, 
And so then I'll be conducting case studies, which will include a lot of in-depth interviewing, um, a lot of classroom observations, again, so some of the same methods as I used before. And then in collaboration with uh, my advisors and in collaboration with my team at Enseigne Utile, um, the plan is actually to develop some tools and a set of best practices that we can actually then implement in the schools that they're already working with or a set of broader schools. Um, I'll figure that one out later. Um, and then implement them and let that go for at least like four months. If I do it faster, great. I'd love to have more time to implement it. Um, and use pre and post surveys to see, okay, how, like, you know, what is trust like right now? What is motivation like right now in the in teachers and with the equipo de directivos? Um, and then see if that changes later on. Um, hopefully using some, so I can combine some quantitative and qualitative um, data and understand if there's been a positive, a negative, or like no change after the time that we've um, implemented these practices. And of course, um, the last month is going to be really like analyzing, looking at what's happened, what worked, what didn't work, are there ways that we would tweak things in the future. Um, and then ideally I'd love to you know, write something, to perhaps publish it. But then also, because this goes into the challenges a little bit, because like the last one here, culture change takes a, a whole lot of time. Um, I'm hoping that in the end, you know, it's not the end of the project. It's not like these are, you know, the, the five things that you can do to get a school culture that's conducive to this. I'm hoping that it can be like, all right, here are the ideas. This is what we found, and then and San Chile can continue to use these ideas and explore them and, and change them. Um, and I mean, a lot again. So a lot of the stuff that I did last time is really informing um, how I'm looking at it this time. So just that like. School cultures vary greatly across all of Chile, so there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, we're really going to have to tailor everything to every single school, because there's various types of schools, um, various sizes, like some are much more, have many more resources than others, or different um, makeups of, of students. The student body might look very differently. Um, also, some of these schools, it's going to be much more easy to actually intervene and work with them. Others, not so much. Um, there's quite a bit of tension in many schools between the um, docentes or the, the teachers and like the administrators and depending on how that relationship is like will probably depend a lot how the research goes um, and then for, again from last time teachers are already pretty fearful of evaluation and feedback it's not always been used as something that's constructive um, I've heard stories of where it's common that there'll be a the, the, the director of the school will come in and do an observation and then without really saying why the teachers fired because they didn't like what they were doing in the classroom um, and then of course the idea of my whole of this whole project is that you're getting a lot more feedback and, and bringing out the voices of the teachers and that's not necessarily what all the school leaders want um, they like having <laughs> their their authority over the school you know things run a certain way change is hard um, so we, a little bit of pushback, I imagine. And then the last thing that's on here, that or that's not on here, is obviously with um, the political climate right now, I imagine that there's going to be a lot of days off of school, <laughs> which will make my project a little difficult. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, wondering if there's going to be a lot of Thomas. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it, really excited about the um, the people I am working with um, and the organization I'm working with I have a lot of great great resources and ab ab um, ability to tap into these various schools. Um, and at Enseña Chile, I'll be working directly with a lot of people who are teachers or who have been teachers, which is um, extremely useful. So that's about it. If you have questions or suggestions, let me know. And this is one of the schools that I've